The Mindful Life Practice. So let's make our way onto our backs. And just kind of relax down with your, you can have your soles of feet together, your knees drifting apart. Bring one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. So typically what bar classes are like, if you go to the studio, there's like really loud music. We're moving to the music, we're dancing. What makes this bar class unique is that it is a hard workout, but we are moving mindfully, we're moving with our breath. There isn't any music in the background. If you wanna play your own playlist at home, you are more than welcome. But I've really come to enjoy the way that we are able to integrate a workout while still moving through what feels like a yoga practice. So if you have an intention for why you have shown up on your mat today, identify it now. Whether it's just to build strength, whether it's to start your day off strong or fresh, or if you're here in the Middle East, we're winding down into our long weekend. So you might be there with that intention in mind. Whatever it is, there is no right or wrong. Now let's take one more breath in total stillness. And then we're going to start off with our core today. So take our palms onto our knees, draw our knees into chest, wrap the arms around the shins, give yourself a little bit of a hug. And then interlace your palms on the back of your skull. You're going to curl your body up, lengthen your right leg long, tap your right elbow to your left knee and hold here for eight, for seven, for six, for five, for four, for three, for two, and then for one. Tap the other way, hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna keep going like this. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other way, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take one more of each. Feeling that little quiver in your core as it starts to warm up. Cross the other way. Actually, let's do one more of each. I lied. Cross, hold. And last one. And then just slowly recline all the way back down. Grip your palms in, sorry, grip your block or whatever object you have to pass in between the palms of your hands. I'm going to shuffle a little bit down actually because I have my chair in the way. You're going to lift that block behind you. Lift the block up. See if you can pass it between your ankles and then stretch it back in front of you. So basically the intention here, I want you to keep your shoulders on the mat. Keep your head on the mat so you're not cranking through the neck, you're staying grounded. So I realized at the start of the class, I think I said you could use a tissue box or maybe I said Kleenex box. This is an interesting fact for Canadians. Um, something I learned when I moved abroad is that no one else in the world knows what you mean when you say a Kleenex or a Kleenex box. So Kleenex is one of the brand names for tissues in Canada. And for some reason, we've all started calling tissues Kleenexes. <laughs> anyway, that's just a fun fact. It's the same thing with KD. 
craft dinner, everyone else calls it macaroni and cheese. For some reason, we Canadians call it KB. <laughs> Let's just take four more block passes. I think I've effectively distracted you guys. Three. Two. And then one. And then just slide the block to the side. Take your knees into your chest. I'm warming up already. I have this constant battle going with my air conditioning. Today, instead of turning my AC off, I just wore a sweater. Okay, we're doing one more thing. You're gonna lift your legs up. What we're gonna do is curl our body up a little bit, drop your right leg, and then pass the block behind your left leg. Okay, and then swap the other way. So you're passing the block underneath the right leg this time. Now I normally don't start this class so hardcore with core, but I've realized that if I don't do it at the beginning, then I sometimes never get to it at the end. So we're gonna start strong, see where that leads us. Why don't we do five more block passes? And then one. And then just draw the knees into the chest. Rock your body from side to side. Okay, one last little bit of core while we stay on our back. And cross your right thigh on top of your left. Cross your right arm on top of your left. So you're coming into like eagle pose from yoga, but you're on your back. You can grip your palms to your opposite shoulders and you're just gonna curl up and then make a connection with your elbows to knee and hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then on one, open your arms up into cactus arms Drop your knees over to, so you're going to shift your hips towards the right, drop them over to the left. Gaze the opposite way, and then just take five breaths in this spinal twist. And then come all the way back up through center. And then we'll take it the opposite way. So left thigh on top of the right, left arm on top of the right, curl up, holding here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And then one, open the arms. This time your hips are gonna shuffle over towards the left and knees will drop over towards the right. And then just come all the way back up through center. Take your palms onto the backs of your thighs. Rock and roll the length of your spine. Rock all the way up. And then we're gonna come all the way around and down, resting your body into a child's pose. So rest your forehead on the mat. Rest your hips on your heels. Let this pose be really grounding, sending breath in through the upper back. And then exhaling, sinking a little bit deeper into your shape. Inhale. And then exhale. And then take one more inhale. One more exhale. On your breath in, let's tilt all the way up into a table. Let's do one little wrist opener here. So thread your right hand face up so your fingertips are going back towards your kneecap and then just stay for three full breaths. And then switch the opposite way. So root your right palm, lift your left palm face up, take a few breaths into the wrist.
and then land the left palm back down. Let's tuck our toes and lift up and back to your first down dog. You can bend through one knee and then bend through the next. So we're gonna do a really gentle yoga style warm up to start, just kind of a low lunge series. And then we'll transition into our bar workout, okay? So take your right leg up towards the sky, big, big stretch. Draw your right knee in and see if you can step the right foot between your palms. And if you need to use your hand to get the foot there, that's okay. Land onto your left knee. Let's inhale, reach the palms up towards the sky, and then just exhale, sweep them back. It's been like my favorite move this week. Taking three more of these. Breath in, big stretch, and then breath out, hinge forward. So generally in yoga, we will expand on the inhales, and we will contract on the exhales. And then one more inhale. And then this time when you exhale, hinge your palms forward, leave your left palm where it is, breathe your right palm up towards the sky, twist. And then exhale the right palm back down, taking three more just like this, breath in, you sweep upwards, and then breath out, you land. Two more. And then last one, inhale, take your right arm up, Sweep the left arm, or sorry, the right arm back, land it on the sacrum, maybe stay here. Maybe take the heel towards the bottom, gripping the right palm to the left foot, and then stay for a few breaths into your quad stretch. And then let's just release the left foot, take the right palm forward, and then walk the fingertips back, lengthening over the right leg, and then just take three rounds of breath into the tightness, inhale, and then exhale, two more. One more. Walk your palms forward, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Keep your left palm where it is, spiral your right palm up towards the sky. We're gonna step the right foot all the way back. See if you can step into your Vashi Stasana, your side plank. If your wrist gives you trouble, you can always be on the elbow. Please feel free to modify to take breaks. Um, you are your first teacher, right? You know your body best, not me. And just because I suggest something doesn't mean that it's necessarily right for you today. So just do what feels good. Take one more breath with your arm up overhead. And then let's roll forward back into a plank and move through our first vinyasa. So beginner's vinyasa, land the knees. Slowly lower all the way down. Inhaling the heart up. Exhaling to lower, and then shift back through a table. Find yourself into a down dog. Take your left leg up towards the sky, three legged dog, big stretch. Draw your left knee in, step your left foot between the palms. Land onto the right knee. If you need to cushion the kneecap, go ahead. And then let's start moving with our breath, inhaling, reaching the arms up, and then exhaling, sweeping them back. Three more. Two more. And then one more. Inhale the arms all the way up. And then exhale the palms to frame the foot. Now leave your right palm where it is. Breathe your left arm up towards the sky. And then exhale, send it back down. Three more. Two more. On your last one, take the left arm up. Maybe stay here. Maybe swing it back to the sacrum. Maybe you take the quad stretch. Looking over the left shoulder, take three rounds of breath. And then release the left palm back forward. And let's walk the fingertips back as you lengthen over your left leg and then take three rounds of breath, inhaling. And then exhaling, hinging forward, two more. One more. Walk your fingertips forward, plant your right palm, tuck your right toes, 
We're gonna lift the left arm all the way up, stack your left foot all the way back, find yourself in a side plank for three, for two, and then for one, we're gonna move through another vinyasa. So come into your plank. I'm gonna move through a full vinyasa this time with my knees lifted. If you're more new to yoga, I would recommend keeping them lower. And then shifting all the way back to your down dog. All right, let's come forward into a plank. So we're gonna start moving into our bar work, okay? So you can have your knees lowered. You can also move at a slower pace than me. What I'm gonna do is step my right foot wider than my hands and then lift the right arm up. So you can always have the knee lowered and then just step back like this, okay? That's one level. If you're okay with the, the toes tucked, we'll step from plank all the way into low lunge. So in this class, I teach with a lot of repetition, as you guys know, who have been with me a lot. Because, well, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> Never have been. Best I can do is cha-cha slide. <laughs> and so I find in these classes where we're moving quickly, it helps to have familiarity. Right? If you kind of know where we're going, it makes a bit more sense. So if it's your first time in class, know that it will make more sense and it will get easier over time. And if it's your first time back after a long time, know that it will get easier. <laughs> you will reconnect to your muscle memory and reconnect to your strength. So just keep with it, but also go easy. Giving yourself an opportunity to take breaks. Let's take one more of each. Last one, and then come back into your plank. Hold your plank, navel in 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, on one. Shift your hips up and back, take your down dog, take five deep breaths. And then bend through the knees, gaze forward, step the feet up to meet the hands. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Take an exhale, fold. And then inhale, sweep your arms all the way up to stand. And then take your palms into your heart center. So step your feet wide now. If you do have weights, we're going to integrate our weights into our next exercise. And if you don't have weights, you don't need them, it's okay. If you are modifying with something around your house, make sure it's a safe thing to modify with. <laughs> Step your feet wide. You're gonna take your toes out, your heels in, and then bend through the knees and sit down into a goddess squat, okay? With our arms out at shoulder height, we're gonna pivot on the back toes and close the arms together, and then open wide. So basically for alignment, I think the most important thing in most lunges is that your knees are always moving in the same direction as your toes, okay? So you might not fully rotate around right now to square with the short edge of your mat, that is okay. As long as your knee is pointing in the right direction as your toes, okay? That's your alignment goal. I would recommend using like one to five pound weights for this. Um, it can seem small, but these micro repetitive movements get hard over time. So even if you lift bigger weights at the gym, you don't need to go super hard on this one. Unless you've been to every bar class since the beginning of the mindful life practice and you're ready for nine pound weights, that's okay. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> Let's take one more of each. And then come all the way back in through center. Take your weights into your center line. You're gonna hinge your way forward like you're doing a deadlift at the gym. Lift the arms up, keeping this squat in your legs, bending forward and then lifting the arms up. Slowly hinging, lifting up. 
Let's just take four more of these. You got this. Three more. Two more. And then one more. Come all the way up. Open your arms into cactus arms. Keep your knees bent. We're gonna curl the arms in, open them up, press them overhead. Okay, curling them in, opening them up, pressing overhead. So it's a two-part movement. We're getting a chest press. We're also getting a shoulder press. Make sure you can see your elbows in your periphery. If you can't see them at any point, it means you're taking them too far out. So 90 degree angle. Four more of these, you got this. Three more. Oh, this is hard after taking a week off. Two more. Last one. Come all the way back in through center. Take your weights so that they're at shoulder height. We're gonna take our hip hop move. So crossing the arms, pulling them back. So this is shoulder work. You should also be feeling it in your triceps. You can add a little bit of dancing, like a little bit of a like kind of wiggle in your torso. It's the best we do for dancing here. <laughs> Let's take five, four, three, two, and then one. Take your weights into your center, just keep them here. Lift your right heel, land it. Lift your left heel, land it. So just a little bit of work for the toes. And if you want to take it up, you lift both at once. This is like the most ballerina the toes we get here. <laughs> Let's take four, three, two, and then one, land the heels, just lengthen all the way back up. Turn your toes in. You can wiggle your feet in through center. Keep the weights in hand. Turn your body so that, well, I'm just stepping away from my chair. <laughs> you could be facing it, whatever. Um, take your weights into your heart center. And then we're gonna bend through the knees and sit back into what's called a chair in yoga. Okay, so lifting all the way back up, bending the knees and sitting back. So alignment here. You wanna see your toes poking out in front of your knees. And you want your tailbone to be slightly tucked. We have this tendency to stick our butt like this. I want you to see if you can tuck your tailbone a little bit. Let's go with four, three. For some reason, four is the number today. Two, I don't know why. And then one, come down into your chair. Lift your arms in front of you. Now I want you to row backwards with your right arm. So keep your left arm extended. Row the right arm back, stay low. If you're ready, opposite leg. So left leg steps back. Left and right at the same time. Magic four, <laughs> three, you got this. Two, take one more, land and stay where you are. Take those weights into heart center, bend through your left knee, bring it back to hover low. And with the knees hovering, we're going to twist and then take it through center. Twist, take it through center. So twist towards your standing leg, right leg. It's gonna stabilize you. If you twist the other way, it's just a bit more unstable. And if you're feeling wobbly, you can put down the weights. We have our chairs, it's all good. Four, three, Two. On one, come back through center. Open your weights in front of you. Keep that bend in the back knee. Let's go curl and press. So it's a bicep curl. And the reason why I add the shoulder press in here is that often the bicep curl is a little too simple. We work our biceps a lot, carrying groceries, lifting objects. And so a bicep curl alone doesn't usually bring the biceps into fatigue, but if you add in the shoulder press, that can be a little fatiguing. <laughs> Magic four, three, two, and on one, you're gonna take those weights back 
in the heart center of your thighs burning yet lift your left leg all the way up and now pivot towards the left leg so the standing leg maybe you extend your arms three breaths two and then one coming all the way back through center i'm going to grab a sip of water where is my water there it is before we move in to the opposite side So this time, hands up our center. Again, we will move to the rhythm. So bending the knees, sitting back, lifting up the imaginary rhythm. Sometimes I say things like that just come out of my brain from when I used to be teaching in the studio. <laughs> and take one more and stay. Like move to the rhythm. What rhythm? Rhythm of your breath, rhythm of your heartbeat. That's what rhythm. Take your rows back with your left arm. And then when you're ready, we'll synchronize it with the right leg. Remember that rule. You just want your knee to be in line with your toes, right? So I'm not perfectly squared off to my mat, but my left toes are in the direction, my right toes are in the direction of my knees. One more. This time, bend back and hold. Bend through the knee. Take the weights in heart center, hovering the right knee. Twist. And then open. We got this. You know what I'm gonna say next? Magic four, three, two, and then one. Take it back through center. Curl, press. I bumped into one of my neighbors in the hallway that I'm friends with the other day, Gary. Sarah would know him, Sarah. Um, Sarah, teacher Sarah. Anyway, he teaches with me. He told me that every time he walks by my apartment, he can just hear me being like, and warrior two, <laughs> and warrior one. <laughs> take one more. And then take the weights back down, put them in heart center, step all the way up, Right knee comes into the chest, twist towards the right leg, extend the arms. He lives directly across the hall from me and I asked him if he could hear me in his apartment. He said no. I don't know if he was just being nice. Step the right foot back down. Land the weights on the mat and let's just release with a bit of a forward fold. Okay, so we are transitioning into a bit of work for our butts. We are going to use a Pilates ball if you have one. If you don't have one, it's not necessary, okay? I'm gonna put the weights on the chair just so I have them for the next thing. The ball's on top of the weights. Hold on to a chair or the side of your balcony or anything that can support you. Walk your body back so that you're in this L shape. Your torso is parallel with the earth, and I want you to extend your right leg behind you, and then you're gonna make some rainbows with your right leg, so there's a little bit of a bend in your left leg. If you've practiced bar with me before, you know that this is my all-time favorite move. I can't tell you why. I just really like it, this sequence. Works your butt. <laughs> Feels really exhausting, but really good afterwards. Four more. Three more. Two. Last one. Take it back through center. If you have a Pilates ball, you're going to place it between your thigh and your calf. And if you don't have one, you're just going to bend through the knee and hold on to the imaginary ball. The whole point is just to engage your quadricep throughout this movement. So I want you to curl your knee in. Open to the side like dog peeing on a fire hydrant and then curl it back in and then extend it behind you. So I've kind of added in some of these moves into this sequence so that we're really 
expanding through the hip mobility. The hip is a ball and socket joint. It moves in like a zillion ways. <laughs> and it's like a machine. We have to keep it oiled. We have to keep moving through this entire range of motion or else we'll lose it throughout our lives. So four more, yay. You're gonna hate me by the end of this. Three, <laughs> you got this guys. Two, and one, come all the way back, lift the leg up, do eight squeezes. The funny thing is when all your cameras are off and then eight lifts, when I say you got this guys, I really have no idea how you're doing. <laughs> So different than in the studio when I can get a gauge of like how people are feeling and I can either tone it down or tone it up, you know what I mean? Do eight lifts. So you really are responsible for being your own judge here. Squeeze the ball. You want to challenge yourself, but you're not also here to die with the ball. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, get rid of the ball. Oh, step all the way forward. Let's just extend the left leg in front of us and then hinge forward, getting a nice stretch through the back of the left leg before we move into the opposite side. All right, who wants Shavasana now? <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, don't worry. Okay, place the ball down for a minute. And we must do what we did on the opposite side on this side. So this time your right foot is grounded. Your left leg extends behind you, and we're going to do those rainbows. So you're just drawing a big horseshoe. Let's take four, three, two. And then one, come all, all the way back, take your ball or your imaginary ball, place it between your calf and your thigh. Curl in, fire hydrant in, and then extend. Four. We got this, three, two, and then one, extend, do eight squeezes, eight lifts, eight squeezes, eight lifts. You got this, guys. One more round, eight squeezes. Eight lifts. And then just step up, slide the ball. And then let's do a little stretch for the opposite side. So you're on your right heel, right leg's extended, just hinging forward. So we have one more round of something similar <laughs> with the chair and then we're done with the chair. So funny, I the bar is like supposed to be the main prop. I feel like I don't actually don't use it that much anymore now that we're virtual, that's okay. All right, so take your weights in hand. Um, if you wanna up the level, you might have two weights. Um, I just feel like one today. So we are going to hold on, lightly grip the chair with one hand. Now, if you want a little bit more challenge, you are going to lift your left leg. So the weight is in the right hand. Your left leg is lifted. Try to keep your left hip level with your right. You can also do this with both feet grounded. We're just going to row the right arm up. Now this time, lift it up, hold, do little pulses. Three more rounds of eight. Four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, two, last one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, and then one. Take your weight into heart center. Find yourself balancing in warrior three if you can. Letting go of, letting go of the bar. Gaze is low. Hold five, four, three, two, and then one. Come all the way up to stand. And then we'll just take the opposite side as you're ready. Okay, so holding onto the bar with your right hand, stepping all the way back, lifting your right leg if you like, curling up, lowering. Four, three, two, and then on one hold, take eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, two more rounds. Last one. Two, one, take the weight into hand, find your balance, breathing. And then come all the way up to stand. Let's stretch out those legs a little bit. So weights can go to the side. We are done with our weights for now. Take your right heel in towards your bottom. Just take a little quad stretch. And then land the right foot. Let's quad stretch the opposite way. And then come all the way forward, just sit on your chair to have one. Cross your right ankle on top of your left. And then just start to hinge forward to exactly the right angle to where you're getting a little stretch in your hip. And then we will switch it up. So land your right foot, cross your left foot, Hinge forward, taking deep breaths. Come all the way back up to stand. Let's move our way into a down dog. I'm just gonna move my chair out of the way for now because we're done with that. So we're gonna come into a down dog. In our yoga bar, we don't do a lot of vinyasa, so we're gonna move through another vinyasa, coming all the way forward, rippling the heart forward, lowering down, lifting the heart into a back bend, and then shifting all the way back to your down dog. Take your right leg up towards the sky. We're just gonna do a tiny bit of yoga here. Draw your right knee into the chest, holding here for three, for two, for one, tap the right elbow, three, two, one, tap the left elbow, three, two, one, step the right foot between the palms, lift all the way up. Let's come into a warrior two. Take an inhale, reverse your warrior. Come all the way back upright, lengthen through your right leg. Shorten our stance a tiny bit, and then hinge forward, just bringing your body into a tree kanasana, so you're getting a nice stretch through the back of the right calf. And then if you want to stay here, stay here. A third option, a third option, a second option is to shift your weight onto your right fingertips and your right foot and just balance a little bit in Ardha Chandrasana and Half Moon. Take one more inhale. And then step your left foot all the way back. Lengthen through your right leg. Let's just turn all 10 toes to face the side wall. Take a breath in. And then hinge forward. Find yourself in a wide-legged forward fold. And then just take a few deep breaths. And then we will walk the fingertips all the way back around to the right foot, 
land in the left palm, roll onto the outer edge of the left foot, step back to our side plank, just like we did at the start of the class, holding here for three or two, and then for one, moving through a vinyasa, coming all the way back up to your down dog, and then flowing the opposite way. So left leg lifts all the way up, three-legged dog. Draw your left knee in core plank. Take it to the left elbow. Take it to the right elbow. Come all, all the way back through center. Three, two, one. Step your left foot forward. Come all the way up, breath in. Open up into your warrior two. Take an inhale, reverse. Exhale, come all the way up, lengthen through your left leg, shorten your stance a little bit, hinge forward, left arm alongside your left leg, right arm reaches up. And then you decide if you're good here, stay. And if you want to come into that half moon, go ahead. your right foot all the way back. Lift all the way up. This time interlace your palms behind your back body. Lift your heart. Hinge your weight forward with the palms interlaced. Just let your head and neck dangle. Take a few breaths. And then let's release the palms. We're gonna walk all the way back around towards the left foot. Step all the way back to a down dog. If you wanna take a vinyasa, go ahead. We're gonna to move directly into a deep pigeon stretch. Okay, so you're gonna take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Draw your right knee in, lay your right shin across your width of your mat. Shimmy your left knee back. What did I just hear? I thought I heard something go off. I don't know. Take a breath in, lengthen your heart, and then exhale, come all the way forward. Okay, so this is your pigeon pose. If this feels like too much for your knee, too much for your hip, you can always come onto your back body and just cross your right ankle just like we did in the chair, okay? So that's kind of a low impact, um, bit of a softer option, still the exact same deep stretch, still the exact same benefits. Just kind of breathe into whatever's been stuck. Breathe into whatever is going on here. Each inhale, breathing it in, and then with each exhale, letting it go. Take one more inhale. One more exhale. And then just take the palms underneath the shoulders. Coming all the way back up to a down dog. If you're on your back, just stay on your back. And then let's slide into the opposite way. So your left leg lifts all the way up. You draw the left knee in, lay the left shin across the width of the mat, wiggle your right knee back. Take a big breath in. And then come all the way forward. Take one more inhale. One more exhale. And then this 
This time we're just gonna roll onto the left bottom, draw the right knee all the way in. Find yourself balancing on your sits bones. Just one more core move, I promise. Lift your legs up, reach your arms alongside your thighs, hinge all the way back, holding here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one, lowering all the way down. And then let's counter this with a little bit of a heart opener. So step your feet in, plant your palms on the mat. If you know how to do full wheel, if you want to take full wheel, go ahead. I'm just going to go up into bridge. So lifting my hips up, rolling the shoulder blades under, interlacing the palms. Taking three more deep breaths. And then one. Release the grip. Slowly lower each and every vertebrae one at a time. Hips land last. Take a deep breath in. And then a deep breath out. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. And then open your arms into cactus arms. We're gonna drop the knees over to the left and then gaze over to the right. And take your knees all the way back up through center. And then just drop them the opposite way. So this is the last thing that makes this bar class unique. I've never been to another bar class where we take a Shavasana. But we take a Shavasana in this class. So before we head into our Shavasana, if there are any last stretches that you want to do, like maybe a happy baby, butterfly, whatever it is, feel free. And then when you're ready, slowly setting yourself up either to extend in a full Shavasana or maybe join me in a seated meditation or really take any other posture of your choosing. I'm going to wrap us up today with, I have a favorite meditation that I found this week. So if you've been to my other classes, I'm sure you've heard it already, but I think it's worth repeating. It's a meditation for clearing blocks. For moving past our limitations. And I just really like the metaphor in this meditation. I think it's really fun. So I invite you to place your palms facing upwards if you like. This will allow you to receive as well as allow yourself to let go. Close your eyes. Focus on your third eye. Taking deep breaths in, deep breaths out. On the inhale, your stomach and your diaphragm extend. Exhale, diaphragm contracts. 
Inhale, diaphragm extends. Exhale, it contracts. Continue that cycle of breath. Extending on the inhale, contracting on the exhale. So we call on the guidance of highest truth, compassion to enter into this space now. Waking up to our highest potential. We ask that we can clear the space and invite in whoever we see as an inner guide. Something that inspires us or we believe in. If you don't have anything that comes to mind, just imagine a vacuum over your head. So this inner guide or guru places this dust buster over the top of the crown of your head and they turn on the power button, suctioning up all that you have been holding. Clearing you from your toes, to your calves, to your shins, to your knees, to your thighs, to your pelvis, to your stomach to your chest, to your arms, to your fingertips, all the way up to your throat, to your face, your crown, releasing you. And on the inhale, just breathe all that, all that stuff up. On your exhale, let it loose. It's just growing out through your crown. It's being released now. Can it be recycled, transformed, and transmuted? Leaving your space, it's in the ether. It's being cleared. Take another deep breath in, pull it all the way up from your toes, all the way up to your crown. On the exhale, let it loose. Feel that transformation, feel that lifting. Let's do it again because we need it. Picking it up from the toes all the way up, up, up. Breathing it in, breathing it in. Exhale, let it loose. And that vacuum is continuing to cycle. Clearing you, clearing you, clearing you. Lifting off of all the tension, all the stress, all of the chaos, all the gossip, all the fear, all of the resistance to love. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. That guide or that guru or whoever they are, they turn off the vacuum and they float away. And we say, thank you. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always protecting us. Thank you for being there to clear us when we're in doubt, when we're attacked, when we feel disconnected. Ishkabu ma 
a little wake up wiggle. Stretching all the way, fingertips through toes. If you're in seated, stay with me in seated. If you're in Shavasana, just make your way up. I wanna be conscious of your time. It is 4.29 or 8.29, wherever you are. So if you have to go, feel free. If you can stay for a minute longer to close the practice, we will. Hands at heart center, thumbs into the heartbeat, finishing off with an ohm, inhaling and then exhaling, and then inhaling through to make the ohm. So take a breath in, take a breath out, take a breath in, Oh. You guys so much for showing up, for sharing this space and this practice. May we all be happy, healthy, and free of anything that's holding us back. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, peace, namaste. The Mindful Life Practice.